And if somebody here can explain to me the biblical book of Revelations, let me know, because it makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. But Darwin and Einstein's books, they offered us profound, new, elegant, and marvelous ways of looking at our world and at our universe. And just as dramatically, and just as importantly, Madison offered a new way, a new set of rules for human interaction. Rules that bend toward increasing compassion and inclusion and justice. Like Einstein, Einstein said that light bends, and Madison said that the light of justice bends to include all people increasingly. And the light of justice is bending, and it's bending in a positive direction, I'm happy uh, to report. You know, among Americans who are 65 and older, there are approximately 7% of people in that age group who report some form of naturalistic or non-theistic or scientifically based world view. And thank you to those uh, people on the vanguard, those early leaders. But of people who are 30 and under, the percentage is almost four times as many among Americans. So the religious right, they have been lobbying with millions upon millions of dollars for decades upon decades in Washington, D.C. and the Secular Coalition for America. We've existed for five years, but we have justice on our side, and we have the trends on our side, and we are going to be successful, but we need your active leadership and involvement. Sometimes I see people who, when they care about the separation of church and state, they say, oh, we're doomed. You know, our side is, is not going to succeed, and I couldn't disagree more. I am completely optimistic about the future of this country if each and every one of you are involved. You know, uh, President Jimmy Carter has said that he has traveled to 125 nations since he has left the White House. And he has noted that when he goes around the world, he sees that the people, the people in the world have chosen John Lennon's song, Imagine, on their own as something akin to a national or really a world anthem. And people know the words to that song and what it says about human experience. Because Madison, who was a lawyer, and Lennon, who was a poet, each became increasingly focused in their life on how we can help and improve the way human beings interact with each other. To, as Aeschylus said, tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. Madison imagined a constitution that was a mechanism for ever increasing justice and John Lennon's song, Imagine, constitutes a vision of a world for which each passing generation shows increasing passion. But our efforts, our efforts in this room have not yet been worthy, not yet worthy of their vision. We have to do more. In the scripture, God instructs Abraham to kill his son. And we should remember that story. But we should also remember the story of Amia White, that little two-year-old girl dying alone in that van in the sun. We need to remember Jessica Crank, that 15-year-old girl dying from that horrible, hideous, and needless tumor. We cannot sit silently while a modern Abraham is authorized to kill their child, not in this century, not with our laws, and not with our Constitution. You know, it was the vicious Joe McCarthy era that foisted upon us the phrase one nation under God when we've always really been one nation under the Constitution. It is time to rejuvenate. It is time to reinvigorate our true heritage as a nation and it is up to us in this room to do it. That vision has been constituted. It has been imagined and now it's up to us. And what I say to you is that we have an obligation to be the ones to be at the time that makes a difference. And so what I'm talking to you about today is not simply about how we can look at these issues, it's how we can implement them. And I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about what I, as Executive Director of Secular Coalition for America, offered to our board as a vision for what we call our secular decade and tell you how we're pragmatically going to return to separation of church and state and to acceptance of a naturalistic worldview in America. We have specific goals and tactics, and I might even be able to work this. Here we go. 
we're going to claim our national leadership role. In, in short, we have a modest goal here. It's to take over America. I hope you'll all join in. <laughs> and we have specific policy goals. One, Secular Coalition for America will be the go-to organization for religion and policy. Just as people think of you go to the ACLU automatically on those issues, you're going to come to Secular Coalition for America. Reporters and national reporters will come to us. Uh, people who are insiders on Capitol Hill will come to us when we address those questions, and we're going to ensconce ourselves in that role by December 31st, 2012. Secular Coalition for America is going to take issues, and we're going to talk about a sense of our compelling justice issues that penetrate broadly into American society so that informed America, I'm not saying everyone, but people that follow the news, people that participate in the public policy process, will know about Secular Coalition for America and what we're about and what we lobby for. We, with this organization, are going to increase by the thousands the membership of our 10 member organizations. And if you go to our website, you can see who those organizations are. But we are going to increase by the thousands membership in those organizations. Next goal is we're going to have Congress come out of the, co uh, out of the closet. Uh, Congressman Pete Stark is the only non-theistic American uh, self-announced in Congress. We know there are many more who are quietly so. But we want, by the time of the swearing in after the 2018 elections, that there will be 10 or more members of Congress who will be openly non-theistic members of Congress because we are part of the American tapestry and we deserve to be included just like everyone else. How are we going to get to these goals? Teamwork, activism, and that public policy can be a catalyst. When I talk about these children's issues around the country, people get energized. They want to be involved. They want to help. And we are going to use public policy as a catalyst to help change the face of America. This is how teamwork has been in the uh, movement in the past. <laughs> Need to really work on this. But those are the bad old days. I think we're going to get to a point where things are improved. <laughs> and we're going to do unity through policy. Because in our 10 member organizations, we have folks on the one side that are religions. Society for Humanistic Judaism is a religion. Uh, Ethical Culture Society, if you're familiar with those folks, also part of our coalition, they are a religion under American law. Then we also have, on the other end of the spectrum, the American atheists who uh, self-describe as the Marine Corps of non-theism. And they get out there you know, kind of say why religion is wrong. They're all part of our big tent. But where they all agree is policy. They don't want to see those kids hurt. They don't want to see situations uh, where you have these parsonage palaces, as I call them, where tax deductions are used for multi-million dollar megachurch ministers. We're going to speak out on those issues and we're going to drive our grassroots growth through that. Next, we're going to talk to people so that we connect with the average citizen about our issues and connect with them. And connect with them at an emotional level. I think sometimes this movement tends to be a little bit cerebral. We need to talk to people about where their hearts are and about where their emotions are because that's a valid form of communication. Here's our eight tactics. Uh, as to exactly how we're going to do that, leading us to our secular goals. One is we have Secular Coalition for America. If you go to our website, you'll see this. We are expanding the number of issues on which we will lobby. Secondly, we are increasing our lobbying effort. We are putting in more hours lobbying on behalf of secular Americans and separation of church and state. Third, we are improving our communications efforts. We are going to get out there and work with the traditional media and the new media and make a big difference. I just hired a new communications manager. We're going to start penetrating more broadly into the public. Fourth, we're going to have uh, a more robust networking opportunity through Facebook, through Twitter, through blogging, through podcasts. We are going to penetrate into American society more broadly uh, using new media. Fifth, we have a 50-state strategy, and I hope you will all consider involvement in this. I'm doing a grassroots training in Santa Cruz, California on Monday. By the time this decade is out, there will be a secular coalition for California, a secular coalition for Idaho. There will be a secular coalition in all 50 states advocating on behalf of separation of church and state, advocating on behalf of acceptance of non-theistic Americans. We are going to achieve that goal. And if people are interested, we can talk about uh, specifics about getting involved in that. The next issue is outreach to broaden our base. We're going to talk to a broad group. You know, sometimes. Folks in, in our coalition, they can be people who are wonderful, who sometimes skew to the 65-year-old philosophy professor demographic. Uh, 